Often in our life, the issues that we face come down to the question of authority. Who is your authority or what is your authority? Well, today we're going to look at that same issue in the local church. Who is the authority of the local church? Should churches be autonomous? Or is there room in the scriptures for a national organization that calls the shots? That's what we're going to look at in this episode. So when you think about how churches are organized, there are three general ways that churches accomplish this. And, and so today we're going to make some very broad general statements, but hopefully helping, to, helping you to see or understand the different ways that churches can be organized. Often we call this church polity, P-O-L-I-T-Y, church polity, which just deals with how churches are structured or how they're organized. Uh, there are three different types of organizational structures that we have that have sort of developed over the years. The first one is called the Episcopal structure or the Episcopal, Episcopal form of church government. And you can almost say that this is a hierarchical form of church government uh, where there are chief local authorities uh, that then go to regional authorities and then national and even even global authorities as well for that particular religion. A lot of the religions that follow this type of church polity would be the Catholic Church, the Eastern Orthodox Church, the Anglican Church, uh, the Lutheran, and even the United United Methodist churches today all follow this, this sort of way of organizing and structuring the church. So in this particular structure, you have councils or synods that will convene and actually determine doctrine or application of doctrine. And when those councils meet, they are authoritative, and they're made up of some local religious leaders, but primarily it's going to be those religious leaders, those clergy that are higher up in the organization or higher up in the hierarchical government. Um, and, and, you know, what's interesting, though, about when those councils make decisions is those decisions have the same weight as Scripture, you know, we, we, as a Baptist, I believe in the authority of God's Word, and, and that's a previous video that we looked at, and I'll link to it above, uh, where we talk about the authority of God's Word. Uh, but when you look at this sort of hierarchical form of church government, there's an emphasis that is placed on tradition and on man's, man's decisions. As man interprets Scripture, then that becomes authoritative. Uh, the second type of church government is called the Presbyterian form of church government. So we have the Episcopal form of church government. Number two is the Presbyterian form of church government. And this is best described as elder run or the presbyters, which are the elders of the church. Um, usually they are elected or they are chosen locally in the local churches and then they participate in regional meetings and, and then maybe even in national meetings. And in each of those meetings, they will make decisions that will affect the smaller local churches. Now, here's what will be claimed. And, and I want to read for you directly a quote uh, from, uh, from the General Assembly Mission Council Manual of Operations this is for the Presbyterian Church. This is what they'll state, um, that it is not a higher authority, but it's a delegated authority that derives its power from the acquiescence of the elders at the local level. So in other words, the, the, level, the authority that the general, um, the regional group has is not really a, an authority over the local church, but they would say that it is a delegated authority, meaning because it's being delegated to them, it's okay to have that authority. But the reality is, you know, you'll have national delegates uh, that that make decisions, and it will affect local churches that really had no true representation. Uh, you know, not every pastor is going to be involved in that in that regional meeting or in that national meeting. Uh, whether it's delegated or not, there is authority, and that group, that council, does exercise authority over the church. And so the question is, is that biblical? D is it right for an outside council or denominational group to exercise authority over the church? Um, that general assembly of the Presbyterian form of government will set priorities for the church. They clarify strategies and guide organization. They provide oversight and they ad administer and establish worldwide programs. If you think about it, they really do a lot when it comes to evangelism and service and 
development of churches, though they would say it is a, and I want to get the word again, a delegated authority, uh, the reality is it is authority. The third type of government, though, which really tries to set its authority as the scriptures only, as God's word only, as Jesus Christ as the head of the church, is what is often called a congregational form of government. So you have the Episcopal form, the Presbyterian form, and then you have the congregational form of government. And the congregational form of government draws its name from the independent congregations that have the sole authority um, to make decisions, to form, to choose doctrine that they interpret from Scripture, uh, and, and they are independent from other national or other religious authorities. They really truly are independent. Um, I, I want to read for you a, a great definition. This is from Paige Patterson. He's the fifth president of the so Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary at Wake Forest. Um, he said this, The Oxford Dictionary of the Christian Church defines congregational, congregationalism as that form of church polity which rests in the independence of the autonomy of each local church. The principles of democracy and church government rest on the belief that Christ is the sole head of his church, the members are the priest unto God, and that and these units are regarded each as an outcrop and, represent, and representative of the church universal. Now, in this form of government or church polity, churches can still cooperate together, and they still work together. In fact, they may even still participate in fellowships and conventions where churches of like faith meet together and encourage each other. But there is no authority that those conventions or that those meetings, those uh, regional groups have over the local church. And I want to encourage you that this really seems to be the, the most biblical uh, the most biblical pattern that we find. In Ephesians chapter 5, Paul lays out for us really a wonderful example of Christ and the church. Um, he, he's talking specifically about Christ and the church, and he uses husbands and wives as the illustration. Verse 23 says, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let wives be unto their own husbands in everything. Um, going on, he talks about husband, loves your, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. You know, Jesus Christ stands as the head of the church. So in conclusion, what we find in Scripture is that Christ is always lifted up as the head of the church. And local assemblies in the New Testament, uh, they determine their own membership. They appoint their own deacons. They send out missionaries. They're accountable for membership. They can call their own pastors and elders. They rightly divide doctrine. Rightly divide doctrine. All of these are things that we find New Testament churches themselves doing. Now, if you want to dig deeper into this, into this issue of the autonomy of the local church, this is actually sort of the intro video to the next video, which digs deeper into the scriptural model of the autonomy of the local church. I'm going to leave that link here in the, in the description as well as at the end of this video. And I hope that you'll join me as we look at that video on the autonomy of the local church.